The elastic band was having a ho-hum kind of day. It had already jumped on a pegboard and done its morning stretches, four, five, six, seven. Stretches in a straight line, it does this, it's an elastic band. But it was looking for something else. It had already experimented with looking at squares, so it had stretched four, nine, 16, 25. But really, it was looking for something uh, more unusual. And then it had the idea, why don't I stretch into rectangles? And what kind of numbers can I enclose with a rectangle? So that was the first task that he came up with. I can make 24. What other numbers can I come up with between maybe 10 and 20? So that's the first task for the students. Again, whenever I'm giving worksheets, I just print them in white. Um, so you will find this worksheet. And your students should be encouraged whenever you go around them to, uh, after they solve for one or two, find, tell them, oh, why don't you just go and find all of them between, between 10 and 20? Not just be satisfied with one, with finding one. And if your students complete that, well, then you can just boost them onto the 20s. Here's uh, for 26. And for 27, we have two solutions. And for 28, we have two plus another two solutions. And for 29, is this right? No. There. We could, do, we could wrap the elastic around like that or like this. But no, 29 we can't make into a rectangle. So that's, that's disappointing. It looks like uh, not all numbers are rectangular numbers. Square numbers are rectangle numbers, and rectangle numbers are all line segment numbers. So um, it's natural to think of these as embedded circles. We can put the 2 here because 2 is a line segment number, but it's not a rectangle number. 3, that would be the same. 4. Well, 4 is a square number, so it's also a rectangle number. All squares are rectangles. 5. Well, 5, you won't be able to make a rectangle out of it, so 5 is here. 6. Mm, 6. That would be a... You can make a rectangle, 2 by 3, so we can put that into rectangle numbers, but it's not a square. 7. Uh, 8. And you can see that you can ask your kids which one of these um, sets of numbers is going to be larger. It, are the rectangle numbers that are not square numbers, are they going to be largest? Or the line segment numbers that are not rectangle numbers? Which of these lists of numbers is going to be the largest? Hmm. That's an interesting thing to think about. Of course, we are going to use this to set up prime and composite numbers. Where are prime numbers in this? Well, they are the line segment numbers that are not rectangle numbers. Here they are. And where are composite numbers? Well, composite numbers are just another name for rectangle numbers. And the whole reason that I like this setup of prime and composite numbers is because it uses terminology that the kids already have. They already know what a rectangle is. And composite numbers really are rectangle numbers.